All right, so this video is um, recorded in one take. I'm just gonna go through the whole thing and show you how to build a full-scale Mercury space capsule liquor cabinet for your house. So this is what it looks like compared to my little model that, that's kind of, you know, spoiling this at the beginning. This is it. Um, basically, this project started like five years ago and I started building a plastic mock-up made out of like eighth inch, 16th inch, something like that, polystyrene. And that's what those shingles looked like. So these these shingles were, by the way, I should probably explain the shingles are the panels on the outside of the craft, the uh, those corrugated panels. So those are by far the most difficult things to make um, on this whole project. Everything else is pretty straightforward. That's super difficult. And anyone who's attempted to do anything like this um, can probably relate. That's the hardest part to get right. And I knew when I started that I needed to figure out how to do that. So what I did was I got this little lift ring cover. It's like 10 and a half inches tall, like nine inches wide on the capsule. And I decided, hey, let me try to... Um, let me try to re reproduce that as best as I can. And let me get that to a point where it's 100% and it looks like the real deal. And once I can do that, then I can kind of extrapolate it to the bigger panels and, and take on the project. And I didn't want to get ahead of myself and do anything else until I figured out how to make this tiny little panel. So I, I made like 100 of these and I used every type of aluminum and thickness and grade that you can imagine. And what I ended up on ultimately was 0.04 inch um, 3003 H14 aluminum, which I annealed. So this is what I started with. I, I had a hammer and a brass punch and a little MDF cutout, and I just started beating into this aluminum and it, it looks horrible. Um, Anyway, that was the first shingle. And as I progressed, I decided to have like a 3D water water cut uh, piece of HCPE that was, you know, cut out in the actual shape and curvature of these grooves. And I was going to use this little custom chisel attachment that I made for my air hammer to to put those in. And... It was okay. I did a few different grades of aluminum. It actually got to a point where it looked like kind of acceptable, but at a certain point, I felt like I needed to use a hydraulic press. And so I got a 30 ton press. I went out to West Jersey and picked this thing up. And obviously the panels are curved. They're actually a, a compound curve. So the bottom and the top have different curvatures. For this little panel, I wasn't too worried about that. Um, but I, I basically built the, this curved buck that you're seeing and it's filled with concrete and I laid this, um, 3d water or this 2d water cut jet, water jet cut, um, form on top of it. And the whole idea was that was going to, when I applied pressure, that was actually going to bend to the needed radius. Um, and that actually kind of works. So like, here's a few photos and I have a um, bottom and top form because I wanted the pressure plate to be curved as well. So it applied even pressure to this thing. And it actually, came, so these are all messed up. These are all, they weren't annealed or the, they were the wrong grade or something like that. But eventually I got here. I mean, this this really isn't bad. This is like the best thing I've seen um, since I started and these were the best results that I was getting, but I knew it wasn't 100% perfect. And then it kind of got to the point where, where it's like, okay, that, that's great for this piece, but how am I going to do a larger one? So I got away from doing this and I ended up getting a gentleman help me. Um, he, he, um, did a 3D model of the entire capsule. So he has all the shingle files and he sent me a 3D printed um, like hollow buck 
that came in two pieces that I super glued together. And we were gonna try this out. Um, so I filled this with concrete. Uh, you can see that little form is filled with sand right now because that was just so when I poured the concrete in, it would equalize pressure, it wouldn't cause a blowout. And it actually worked. I mean, this was like not bad. It started to, after maybe like 10 or 12 presses, I started to get some cracks. It started to come apart a bit, but 5,000 PSI concrete was, was actually fine. And this is what I came up with. And um, yeah, it's not perfect, but you know, I'm getting somewhere. And that really wasn't something I could scale either. How am I going to do the bigger panels? So I ultimately decided to just have a company in China and I hired on Alibaba to uh, make these uh, 6061 um, forms. So this was the small one, which I started with. And here's where I got, I mean, this is like dead on. And if you look at pictures in museums and stuff like that of this panel, it looks just like this. And at this point I was kind of ready to go ahead. So the way I made these panels was I used my 50 ton press and I annealed them. So if you scratch Sharpie all over a piece of aluminum and just go over it with a blowtorch, eventually that Sharpie will disappear before the aluminum hits its melting point. Um, I learned the hard way that a king size Sharpie, I guess they use different ink or something because um, you will melt your aluminum trying to burn that off. But anyway, so this is the rest of it. Um, that's my, I said 50 ton before, this is my 30 ton press. Um, later on, we're gonna see the 50 ton. So yeah, that's pressing some panels. Uh, that's a pressure plate that I made because I was using that giant heavy concrete one. So I just used a piece of like five eighth inch steel, um, a quarter inch thick or uh, three sixteenths. Yeah, I think that's a three sixteenths round piece of steel with some stock that I really sloppily stick welded in on the edges. And um, anyway, that was my new pressure plate. So the, here's how I was using it. This is my 50 ton press. Um, oh yeah, so this is when I started on it. So. This was the, these pieces are the bottom and top rings that the um, main part of the capsule frame is comprised of. So I think it was like 32 inches diameter on the top, um, 74 and a half on the bottom. And this is just, I use these mending plates to like bolt them all together because I wasn't gonna have them cut like a giant six foot diameter ring. So this is all segmented and I needed to have it set up so I can actually take this thing apart to eventually move it into my house. But that's how they went together. That's the top ring all bolted together. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, these are the, um, these are the studs. Um, there's 24 vertical studs, I guess you call them all around the capsule. Um, this was a mistake. I, I used this U channel because it's almost like an angle iron U channel. I used it because I wanted to, tap all of the screws into it, which is what I did, but I don't know. I, I thought I was gonna, I, I didn't wanna have two walls to drill through when I use this and it's not super structurally sound. Like once you put all the shingles on, it's fine, but you know, moving it around with like just this frame um, wasn't really, it was super wobbly. Anyway, so now I got the big pieces in. So. These pieces, the, these are the, this is the A, where I'm calling this the A, B, and C shingles. So the bottom ones are the A shingles, the middles are the B, top ones are the C. And one important thing about using rubber to press these panels, which helped me a lot, was they all, all the panels on the capsule follow this A, B, C configuration, bottom, middle, top. The problem is there's um, 36 shingles in the capsule, 14 of them are unique. So if you were gonna do a conventional top and bottom die, you would need 28 dies to do this project, which was, you know, would have been 
crazy expensive. So I did this whole thing with four dies, if you include that little one from the beginning, um, three, three of these bigger dies. And the way I was able to get the variations, and what, what's cool about this of not having a top die is I could just bondo out areas that I didn't need. So for example, um, all the umbilical panels on the bottom, they, they didn't, they were like missing two or three grooves or whatever it was on the bottom. So I could just bondo that out and press sand it and press the panel. And then when I was done, I would just chip them out, which, you know, after the end of the project, these, these, these dies I use were a little, um, hammered up from all the punching that I did on them. But anyway, that's just, a way to save like, I don't know, $25,000 on dies is to do it that way. Um, by the way, this is all in the order that I did it. So I'm kind of jumping around a little bit here. Um, this is the window shroud. So this is the buck I made for the window shroud. Um, this is the only plastic part on the whole thing. Um, this was vacuforms. And from way back in the beginning, I was talking about that plastic panel. Those were vacuforms. So I, I've done this before. And I was pretty comfortable getting back into this. This is the first attempt. That one's a lot better. I think that might have been the final one. And that T that you see on the um, on this vacuum box setup right there, that T was so I could put my palm on top of the T and I can use my hand to modulate how much vacuum I was applying to this thing. Because if you gave it you know, if you went full force with the vacuum, it was just getting, it was almost capturing too much detail and all those imperfections on the form were showing up um, through the polystyrene. So that is it. Um, got that mounted to the capsule. Couple more shots of that. That's the um, hatch shroud that's now mounted. And I'm just kind of roughing out this little trim piece right there. Um, these are the um, little thruster things on the side. The, these were a pain in the ass to make. I, I don't really need to go into like a whole other thing on these, but I really wasn't looking forward to building those. And um, they were about as difficult as I thought they would be to make. Um, all right, little walk around of the capsule. There's a picture of the inside. Um, I think I just ignored the fact that I put in the rest of the window. I thought I had a picture of that, and I guess I don't. So uh, I got this little sander from Harbor Freight. So I use this for, on the bottom of the shingles, there's these like little notches, and I needed to cut those notches, and they're, I, I basically did like the round part of the notch with my little metal punch. And then I use the, um, sander to remove the rest of the material. So that, that little sander actually worked pretty well. Um, these are the, this, this other die right here is the, um, recovery section panel die. So I had that manufactured. Um, these are all the, the little washers. So this was a two inch by quarter inch, um, aluminum stock, which I then routed and I cut them all down into like 72 of these little washers. And one big mistake I made was I had a, I had like a little block, like a stop block on my, um, miter saw. And I just cut these all of my miter saw to length and they should be, I think it was three and an eighth inches tall. And I set the block for that so I could cut them all the same, but what ended up happening was the block area got packed with um, aluminum shavings and all of a sudden I'm halfway through doing this and they were all slightly different lengths. So they were all like plus or minus three sixteenths. So I couldn't use these washers interchangeably. I had to actually individually lay out all 72 washers, space them all out with real washers, just use the spacers. And I actually labeled every single one. So like B, for example, was the row and then three was the position. So there'd be, it, I think the bottom was one and it went all the way up to six. And um, every single washer on this top recovery panel or area 
was individually stamped and had a specific space. If you took one off and put one on somewhere else, um, it probably wouldn't align. Um, now we are starting on the heat shield. So routed this whole thing out, uh, made a frame for it out of two by sixes. So this heat shield is actually the exact, it has a big flat spot on the bottom, but otherwise it's the same diameter and it's actually the same curvature. It's an 80 inch, um, radius. And I don't think anyone would ever bother to check that, but it is actually accurate. So I, I foamed the whole thing up, um, bondoed over it and then applied fiberglass, which I think my paint, my body guy told me not to do. He told me to do the fiberglass first and then the bondo because it wouldn't adhere. Um, but it worked out fine. And, um, anyway, that's it all glassed up. Uh, I did a lot of sanding between that and painting this. So that's some wet paint. That's some dry paint. I, I put a little LED ring um, to kind of illuminate the bottom. And um, here's that. That's my electrician. He set me up with all these little lights so I could illuminate the bottom of this, which is my giant piece of glass. So this is 54 inches in diameter. And that's mounted on this big Lazy Susan. And um, this is it. I mean, there's my cranberry juice spinning it around. Um, really happy to make it to this spot in the project. Um, back to the recovery section. Back inside my garage. Um, there's the frame kind of sitting there and it's all set up. Um, back to the window. So now the uh, outside piece of acrylic or plexiglass or whatever for the window shroud. It wasn't, I was trying to like bend it around the frame and then just bolt it into place and have it stay bent. But it was such a large window that when you like touch the outside of the glass, it would just want to bounce back to its original um, shape, which is flat. So I just set this up on a table and clamped some stuff together. I kind of forced it into a curve and then I just blasted it with some heat and it would stay at this on a curvature. And then, you know, it kind of bent into the proper position once I bolted it into that area. So, um, oh, now I'm painting the shingle. So this is priming everything. Um, I'm really happy with the paint I used. This was Sem brand trim black paint and my painter recommended it. And it's an aerosol can, but it's just like a very, very, very high quality spray paint. And the color looked good, the sheen looked good, and it looked pretty accurate to what a brand new on-flown capsule would look like. And um, I was really happy with it. So this is a few pieces painted. I'm starting to put all this together. And so this is Eddie. Eddie is our sign painter. He does all the gold leaf and everything on our trucks. And he's like 70 years old. He's been doing this since he was like 14. Um, he was really excited to do this, which was cool. Um, trying to get Eddie um, scheduled is kind of tough sometimes, but he, once I told him it was ready, he was here in a couple of days and we laid this all out. Um, I had a bunch of reference photos and stuff for him and he was super, super excited to do this project. Um, that's him painting and that's the flag panel. That's a big reveal of the flag. And there was a funny story about how that was almost a 49 nine star flag. Uh, got a little shot of it spinning around on the inside and a couple shots on the outside. And yeah, that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're thinking about building one, don't. It's a huge pain in the ass. And yeah, hope you learned something.